was uh, Nick is the maintenance manager. He works in your office. He works at another site. He's an employee of the company? Of another company. Okay, what company does he work for? He works for Coal Harbor. Coal Harbor? He's my employee. He's your employee or he's under contract to you? He's under contract. And when was that contract started? June 1st. All right. Um, and re so that's the maintenance. In regards to the repairs, you have, you said contractors. What does that mean? Do you have a contract with a company that does all your repairs? You call different companies when you need different repairs. What does that look like? We call different companies and so to what repairs required. So if there's a plumbing issue, it's a GMC plumbing. So you have a roster? Yeah. All right, and how did that roster come to be? Well, how, how did you get, uh, create a roster? Is this something that existed with the company you worked for? Is this something you put in place for this building? Oh, no, it's pre-existing for my line of work. So your line for, well, that's the, rather broad. That's, yeah. That means the whole industry. So do you mean for your company, for your position? For I'm not sure I understand your yeah. line of work. So, for the company, so basically, if there's a plumbing issue, we have a certain number of plumbers that we, we would call. Like electrical, we have a certain number of electricians that are called that we are on call with them or priority with them. Um, our alarm company, all that is something that our office already has in place and we just follow through with it to every site. All right, so that is how, is there anything else you'd like me to know about how you're providing services can to I the building? Can I follow up? On you can yeah. absolutely, anytime I ask questions, you have the right to clarify any question that I've asked. So, having to run not only this building, other buildings, you, you indicated you have a roster of uh, approved uh, vendors, uh, which include Landscaping, uh, plumbing, electrical, uh, fire, um, roofing, See, so snow removal. You don't have to go to the yellow pages no. to look for somebody when you when you need somebody. No. And so, just so the adjudicator understands, so uh, you have somebody. Basically, from what you said, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said there's three of you going to the building once a week. So, would it be fair to say that every second day somebody's checking the mailbox? Well, let's yeah. ask how often is the how mailbox? How often is the mailbox checked? Yeah. At times somebody is on site. So, so how often? Not... Once a week? Once a week? I would say, no, every time they're on site. So, so you're not certain how often it's checked, but it's checked every, every time, time they're on okay. site. Including yourself. So, you all have whatever it is, whether it's a key or combination or the ability to open the box. How's the box opened? It's a locked box. It's a locked box, so... At the front of the entrance, which have special keys in it, and then there's a key for the uh, mailbox that's in the laundry room. Okay, so the three staff members all can access the lock box. And then, so you find something there that... Okay, but well what happens if there's an emergency? They call through the emergency phone number and the answering service dispatches, and most of the cases I get those middle of the call nights uh, calls. Middle of the night calls? calls yeah. You get them? Yeah. So, can you give me an example of what calls came from this place? Uh, I don't know if you can go back to 2017, but to the best of your recollection. I'm trying to think of there was one that there was a heavy rain. I don't know what time period it was, and uh, water was coming through the light. Um, so not only was the roofer dispatched, the electrician was dispatched at that time and to ensure that a electrical was proper and uh, to see if they could uh, find what, what was happening on the roof. It ended up not being a roofing issue. It was uh, a pipe in between the roof and the ceiling 
had uh, one of the anchors had come off, so the pipe was sloping wrong, and when it was draining, where the anchor had come off, the water was coming down into the ceiling. So it was rain water. Yeah. So the emergency, uh, somebody calls with a, I don't know, plug toilet. You'll be getting the call, and you dispatch either Nick or uh, whatever person is required. And I'm third person, so you know, I'm third person on on the call list. What does that mean? I'm supposed to be the third person contacted, but they always call me first. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing is I provided a copy of um, of this to, to my friends. Can you uh, identify this document? What is that? That would be the actual due diligence list from uh, the lawyers. And if you look along the column under comments, it has it comments there. Nowhere does it say that this that there's a super that lives in 116 Spencer. In fact, if there was something extra, if you note down at the bottom, 114 Spencer uh, pays rent to have access to the backyard of 100 of um, the backyard of 116 Spencer. So all notations regarding anything to do with 116 Spencer were provided on this document. Okay, thank you. So I've only said there was no super at 116 Spencer, physically no super at 116 Spencer. Whether the super resided elsewhere, didn't reside at 116 Spencer. Okay, we are claiming that Ms. Bates lived yeah, at no, 116 Spencer. I understand okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever the tenants are claiming that the four points there, mm -hmm. you had placed... Uh, the same services with what they were maybe, let's say, accustomed to, in a different manner. It's an outside person who was dealing with them, was an outside person, and we have outside contractors. No services were discontinued. And what would happen if a tenant uh, got drunk and wanted to get in? Who would they call? They would call the, uh, uh, the emergency service, and mobile security would go by. They have access to where the keys are kept, in order to let somebody in once they properly identify themselves that they're a resident of the building. So if it's a stranger, they're not coming in? It's stranger's not coming in. We also changed out their old key, key system because people, we don't know how many people had it, uh, put the front door to a fob so it's electronically controlled and the keys can be, fobs can be eliminated once the person has actually moved out and the building went to a master key system and there were individual keys prior to that. When was this all done? Uh, that was during the build, building renovations, where they did the corridors, the painting, the lobby, security cameras. So you renovated the building as well after uh, you could and the it and, it? and created the laundry room. And created the laundry room. That didn't exist before. Correct. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask as a result of that response to the services provided? calls the emergency phone number, do they reach a person? Yes. And it's an answering service. Okay. Um, so regardless of the time, they always reach a person, or will they sometimes reach a voice messaging machine? Because uh, Nick is the maintenance manager. He works in your office. He works at another site. He's an employee of the company? Of another company.
Mr. Glenn Aubrey and through my office only to communicate with you as the property manager? I don't recall the exact date, but I believe Rosie did at one time in the past, but I don't remember the exact date. So what do you mean he doesn't acknowledge you? Did he acknowledge you on the day that you met the inspectors there? No, no, he, he said, yeah, no, I, my emails. I've sent him emails in the past and he's never acknowledged them. And he's never sent, he's never sent me a direct email. He always sends his complaints to Rosie and, not, and never to me. So, sending emails to Rosie, for example, if he had a leaky toilet and he wanted the job done, uh, would it be better if he sent it to you or send it to Rosie? To me. I'm the property manager. But he's not sending you any complaints? No. Mr. Zahn? Mr. Uh, Glenn?
So back on the record, the time now is 11.05. It is Monday, March 26, 2018. It's hearing room E, and we're hearing the matters of TSL 9070417, TSD 9088017. And we've connected on the telephone line with, um, could you say your name, sir? Ray Van Eno. Ray Van Eno. How do you spell it? <coughs> Ray, R-A-Y. Last name, Van Eno, capital V-A-N. Other words, capital E-E-N-O-O-G-H-E. G-H-E. G-H-E, yeah. O-O-G-H-E. Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Van Eno, or can I call you Ray? Yeah, call me Ray. Okay, thanks, Ray. Do you uh, affirm that the evidence you're about to give is the truth? Yeah. Do you realize that it's an offense to tell me an untruth? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn you over to Mr. Chivatero for questions first. Then I'm going to uh, uh, turn you over to Mr. Lucarini, who represents the tenant, and then turn you back to Mr. Chivatero. Um, okay, so we're also, in addition to being with Mr. Chibatero, we also have Luca Lucarini, uh, who's the tenant rep and the tenant with us, and uh, James Shilton as well, who represents the tenant, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to turn you over to Mr. Chibatero, okay? Okay, Mr. Chibatero. Mr. Vanino, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Vanino, you are the owner of 116 Spencer? Yeah, I was the owner of 116 Spencer. And when did you cease being the owner? Uh, last year, I think it was June 2017. And or May, 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 May or June. Okay. And do you, uh, you are you familiar with uh, 116 Spencer? Yeah. And you familiar with apartment 106? Mr. Hansen? Yeah. Um, he's been your tenant for some time, right? Yeah, since 2009. Right. So, when he moved in, how many parking spots did Mr. Sp uh, Hansen have? One. And do you, do you have any knowledge as to if he had any more parking spots? Not at that time. Not when he moved in. Right. What happened later? Do you recall uh, him? Yeah, in, in November 2013, yes. he rented one extra parking spot. Do you know, did he tell you why he's renting another spot or not? <clears throat> well, he would have dealt with the superintendent at the time, John. So, uh, you, so you don't really, so you have no knowledge as to what the uh, transaction or the discussion was about? The parking? No, I wasn't part of the discussion. Uh, I know he, when he rented the spot, uh, he, uh, but I wasn't, one assumes he's got another car or two cars now, so. Right, and then at some point in time he obtained a third parking spot? Yeah, in uh, April 2014. Okay. And he was paying for the two additional spots? Yeah. And then, did you, did, was there any discussion about parking until such time that you sold the building? Was there any discussion? Yeah, did you have any interchange with the tenant? Did you have to do anything with the parking or that? So anyways, did you terminate the tenant? Did you terminate the oh, parking? Oh yeah, the, the new owner asked me to write a letter stating that the two parking spots were terminated. Right. And and how many parking spots did you have in the back there? Do you do you know? Do you remember? I think about eight or so. I mean eight with the whole building or something like that. There, there wasn't one spot per unit. It was far less. It was minimal parking. So how was it that Mr. Hansen was able to obtain two extra spots, uh, one in 2013 and one in 2014, do you know? Well, we had them available, so uh, we rented them. Uh-huh. So when it's available, you rent it out, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if someone wants a spot, we rent it out. 
we found uh, as an exhibit with this quote uh, a letter seemed to be signed by you uh, dated May 31st, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recall writing such a letter? Terminating the parking spot? Yes. Yeah. And uh, that was the extent of your involvement? Yes.
Take Ms. Bolton's place. Yes. Uh, oh, are one. we hearing from Matt Beauchamp? That's it. I was just going to ask. Uh, Sorry, oh, Mr. Hanson, just one moment. Do you want me to call him? Oh. Do you need tissue? Mm -hmm. Get that, Mr. Hanson. Thank you. Pass the tissue to Mr. Hanson. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so we're going to hear from Mr. Beauchamp? Yeah, just leave it to Mr. Beauchamp? Maybe he's taking a closer look at the car and can give us some insights. Good afternoon, Mr. Beauchamp. Will you please join us? Pardon me. <laughs> please say your name for the uh, Matthew Beauchamp. Mr. Beauchamp, we rely on evidence at a hearing. Do you promise your evidence today will be true? Yes. Do you know it's against the law if you break your promise to tell the truth? Yes. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Mr. Shivatano. So, Beauchamp, what do you do for the I'm the operations coordinator for OBN Security. What is OBN Security? So, we're a security firm uh, that performs mobile patrol services along with uh, various other security services. Uh, for what? For any number of clients, including residential clients, uh, that we were retained in this matter. And would that include this landlord? That would have been <laughs> yeah, okay. retained by. All right, so dotted the I's, crossed the T's. Yes. We uh, were retained so, by so Briar Lane Property Management. All right. So, so now we know what, what is part of your uh, mandate? Uh, we were retained about a year ago to conduct regular patrols of the property at 116 Spencer to audit the exterior of the building for any violations of lease conditions and also to watch over the parking lot. What can you tell us about the parking lot? Uh, uh, do you, are you familiar with it? Yes, I am. Uh, if I showed you some photographs, would you be able to? I'm showing him the exhibit, uh, remember? Thank you. These are the photographs? Yes. Thank you. The same ones that you have. Yes, it is. The same Landlords one. 2. Yeah. Landlords 1 was the notice of violation. Mr. Wakeley, your tenant's one is member uh, vice chair's uh, order. Oh. November. Um, do you recognize these photographs? Yes, they're condition, the regular condition for approximately the last 10 months. I uh, do have uh, timestamp pictures and reports dating back for that amount of time. Um, do you have them with you? Yes, I do have copies. So, are, are they just the same photos? Are, are they just similar, basically very, the same? Very similar, but they are. The, the evidence that we do have is timestamped and geotagged to show what date and time they were taken, as well as the location where they were taken. Let me ask you this, just to show them the process. Any significant change in the last year? I believe at one point there was two vehicles tarped. Now there is only one. Oh, what? And have you ever examined... Um, when I say examined, I know you didn't, you're not a mechanic and you didn't get permission to go and yeah. check the car, but have you had a close look at the vehicle? Uh, we have at no time looked underneath the tarp. Never? The, the, never. the one vehicle has remained tarped uh, since the day that we first saw it on site. And are you aware that the city has issued a notice of violation against the landlord? I was made aware of that, yes. And uh, that right now, if one is to go to the building, uh, would we found one, one or two cars? There would be one car tarped and covered with a rope extending to the fence and on occasion a second white Ford parked diagonally across the two spots that are blocked by the rope. Right. So the, the rope is blocking off? Uh, the the two, two other spots. Two other spots. Okay. And uh, that was confirmed uh, this morning's report. We did have a guard on site patrolling the property last night. He so it's, 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 not it's still there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, that's it. Mr. Wakeley may have some questions for you. Okay. The two spots that are covered with the rope that you just testified to, those are the two other parking spots that are, are leased to Mr. Hanson? We do not have a record of the lease. We just, it's an anomaly within the parking lot that we note in our report. Fair enough. Uh, and you've never asked Mr. Hanson to <coughs> start the car? No. You've never asked him to show you whether it runs or not? We prepare a report on the status of what we observe on site and report it back to property management. Okay, so you have no evidence to give today about whether that car is actually operative um, at any time. The, the evidence I can give to that is that the car has not moved in a year. On Almost the occasions year. that you happen to uh, have patrols coming by? We have been patrolling that property nightly. Um, 
Um, so you have no evidence specifically to give that the car doesn't run between that was it wasn't running between January 19th and January 25th, uh, 2019. We ha the evidence we would be able to provide is that the car did not move. It was in the same location nightly every night when we checked it with, under the same status of the tarp over it. The rope tied identically. So a period of approximately one hour once a day it was not if they, at that time. If the vehicle it was observed daily and was observed to have this rope tied in the same fashion and the tarp placed in the same way on the vehicle every night. Thank you, no further questions. Any redirect? Just quickly, so uh, you, you understand from the suggestion? Yes. Yes. 